Hello and welcome to a nostalgia playthrough of Railroad Tycoon 2 Platinum Edition. My intention for this playthrough here is to go through every single scenario in both the campaigns that are available, 36 scenarios in total, and go for gold medal on hard difficulty. Maybe you can learn a thing or two? And, uh, well, I would like to preface this all with saying that this game was released in 1998 and I've put a lot more hours into this game since then than I would like to admit. It's, uh, in my opinion, the best train-related business simulator on the market, still to this day. Either way, we're gonna go here with new campaign, classic campaign, and hard difficulty, and I would also like to say ahead of time, I apologize for my English being a bit faulty at times. You will notice it, probably through, if you watch through these episodes. Well, hello there! Ha. Ah, you're noticing the gents on the board. Well, go ahead, have a look. Iron men is what they call them. Some of them upright businessmen. Some as low down as a snake's belly. But you know, all of them were legends. Many a daydream I found myself wondering what it would be like to reign high on the rails of steel. You too, huh? <laughs> oh, why don't you give it a try? Take a gander at the first challenge, the Iron Seed. You might want to make some different choices from how the Iron Men got started. Choose an option from the bottom group, then get started. By the looks of you, this should be pretty entertaining. <laughs> I think I'll stick around. Well, go on, get to it. Alright, well, I hope it will be entertaining, and I hope you might want to stick around as well. Now I'm gonna go through a few things before we go into the scenario itself here. And unfortunately this Hello? old man- Hello? You awake? Go ahead and select a map to get started! <laughs> As I was about to say, unfortunately this old man is gonna interrupt me a few times. He has no patience, no chill this guy. Uh, so either way, you get three options before going into each scenario and they're different every time, depending on well, what the scenario is. I would just like to say on this scenario, the $50,000 one, do not pick this, $50,000 will not get you very far. Uh, the John Bull 240 available early, well you get a train available slightly earlier. In my opinion you can make a Look, little- I'm getting old here, you want to get started before they come and measure me for a coffin? I am indeed trying to do that. Uh, so if you pick this, you will have, you will save maybe 32000 on replacing the first trains that you buy with this when you get it available and you might make a little bit of profit slightly sooner not worth it in my opinion the whole thing we're going to do here we're going to connect three cities together and 10 percent lower track building cost is the way to go if you ask me because this is going to definitely net you a lot more value than these other options so that being said let's get to it well here you are on the threshold of greatness. With the sweat and labor of the first spikes you drive, you'll be launching your first trains and at the same time an era of revolutionary transit. <laughs> Watch as a nation grows with the help of your iron horses. The people of that nation, if not the whole dang world, are watching and hoping, so don't mess up. All right, so here we are. And just quickly before we get started, I would just like to comment on two things about that video. One is, did anyone else notice that he didn't say train in the start of it? He said trained, with an ED after the train. And second, is it just me or does that uh, cheering at the end of it kind of sound like it slipped straight from like a Nazi rally in 1937 in Berlin after Hitler's done having a speech? At least it sounds a bit like that to me. But uh, either way, just a little bit funny that they messed up that soon in the first video. But maybe, maybe they meant to. I don't know. Either way, it's a good game, so we're not gonna dwell on that for too long. So what we're gonna do here is, uh, the Baltimore and Ohio was the first fully operational steam railroad in the US, built by a group of seven Baltimore businessmen. It proved to be highly successful and set a path for others to follow. As chairman of the B&O, you must connect Baltimore to Washington and haul at least four cargo loads by the end of 1840. 
To earn a silver, also connect the Harper's Ferry and haul at least 8 loads. For a gold victory, which we're going for, connect to Philadelphia and haul at least 12 loads. Now, it says cargo. Human beings are counted as cargo in this uh, scenario here. So, just 12 of anything you transport from one place to another. And I'm gonna get into a little bit of details about some stuff here. Uh, try not to get too caught up in it, but there's a few things I want to cover real quick. Now, you start with $299,000. There's a few things you can do about that if you go into your uh, company screen here. First, you can check out your manager, which is uh, Thomas Crampton in this uh, case, which has train speed steam 10% faster and acceleration 10% faster at the cost of track maintenance 10% higher. But if you utilize those tracks, I will absolutely take that. This is uh, kind of like my go-to manager uh, for steam time rail construction. We can hire some other managers as well, but um, they're not really not really that good, to be honest. It's not what I want to go with. Uh, you got a few options here to see through. But what you can do, since uh, in this first scenario it's pretty straightforward, you don't have to dabble with the stock market whatsoever, and your personal net wealth is it's irrelevant. So, you can issue stock in your company. Uh, a thousand shares, which gives you $82,000. Let's do that. You can do this once every year. And you can issue bonds. As long as your credit rating isn't too low, but as long as it's BB, as it is right now, we can issue stocks. The interest rate isn't super favorable, but it's going to get the ball rolling for us much quicker. Quite often, it pays off to start off a scenario with issuing some bonds, simply because you can start making money so much faster. And, uh, yeah, we're going to do that. So now our credit rating is CC. We cannot issue any more bonds, as you can see here. Another thing you can do is change the dividend. This is what you pay out of your profits to your shareholders. Now, right now we're paying $0.50 per share, adding up to about 5k annually uh, to the 11,000 shares that are outstanding. We are going to pay them nothing. Let's not throw money at that. Now, we got uh, Baltimore here. We got a large station. And... You can do this scenario any way you want, there's like really no right or wrong way except if you fail to complete it, um, then obviously that was the wrong way. Uh, we need to connect to Washington here, which uh, looks a bit shabby compared to how it usually looks in my eyes, but not too bad though, definitely serviceable. And um, uh, let's see, you gotta connect the Harper's Ferry over here. And you gotta connect to Philadelphia over here. You do not need to run trains between these, you just need to connect them with railroads going to them and a station in the city. That's all you need to do. You can make your money any way you want as long as you just do that. So I can see Frederick here is actually a viable option for us to connect to. Uh, the thing is, when you want to connect to a city and do passenger between the cities, passenger and mail service, make sure that the city you connect to have at least four houses in them or in it, because that's what's required to create, you need to have basically four houses within the uh, uh, the uh, radius uh, of the train station for it to generate demand for passenger mail. If it's just three or less, it won't generate demand, but it will generate supply, getting into supply and demand term. Uh, as you can see, the station supplies passenger, mail and food. Food it will supply via this industry here the bakery, but it needs grain to turn that into food. So you need to deliver grain to it to convert to food that you can then drive off to another city. And uh, the same is you could also go for cattle in a meatpacking plant here and turn that into food. Uh, then you need to transport it to another city afterwards to make some profit. You also have this port here, generating two passengers per year and one mail per year. This will change between scenarios, uh, the port isn't set to any specific thing and can uh, produce or demand literally any good in the game. Now, a usual way that I like to do it is just kind of go in uh, Baltimore Relay, 
running a couple of trains between, making some profits, and then shooting down to Washington. That can work pretty well. And I just noticed that this thing right there is kind of blocking our path on our way to Washington a little bit. But uh, that's not so important. We could also, as I said, connect to Frederick. Now, you need to connect from your existing tracks in this scenario. And if you can see here, the grading, there's a bad section over here with like 2 and 2.5. You press G, you can see the terrain layout with a grid network here. Uh, so, that area right there is going to slow these early trains down tremendously. So is this bridge. This bridge is a massive bottleneck and you cannot upgrade it to a double track bridge. They aren't available yet. And, uh, well, in this first scenario you can really get away with just single track. Just everywhere. It should be fine. Unfortunately, there is a little section here with the 2.0 gradient. Maybe we can build around that in some way, but we're just going to take the 2.0 hit. And we're going to build a rail towards relay here. And now, the thing is, with issuing those stocks and those uh, bonds, we can actually take this all the way down to Washington immediately. I'm just not too psyched about that freaking building being that is like the worst placement it could possibly have. Um, as you can see, like, uh, it's really messing with our um, track laying efficiency here. We might be able to demolish it without it costing too much. I hope this could be bad. Uh, 151,000 to demolish. Hmm. Ah, I can't lay a track here to see how much that would cost. Well, approximately. Yes, we'd have 400,000 left. And then we connect the track. It would be a little bit cheaper than this. Um, so we'd have 250,000 left. We could build a station in Washington. And then... Uh, okay, you know what? We got, uh, this is extremely bad RNG right there. And just to show you that we can connect to Washington immediately and make that happen, I know a lot of players probably prefer to connect to the modern airline areas right away. Uh, too bad this thing popped up when I wanted to make an example of what you can do, but we're going to just remove it. We're going to take a massive hit to our monitor and uh, we're going to continue on to Washington. It should, uh, should be fine. So, we are now in Washington. And we definitely cannot go for a large station, which I wanted to do. Uh, but we can go for medium station and we can always upgrade it later. This is encompassing enough houses. Like how I many we got to 4, 7, 8, 9, 10 houses. That's going to create good supply. It's going to create demand. And we're already in Washington before we've even unpaused the game. So uh, now what we can do is create or uh, purchase a couple of trains. One going from Baltimore to Washington. With two mail. And we'll also create one going from Washington to Baltimore. And this can haul, uh, well, the base cargo value is better for mail than passenger. And you have like a limited time to deliver. 300, day 300 days for mail. Can you imagine if you sent a letter and it turned up 300 days later? That'd be pretty. Or could you imagine if you went on a train trip and you arrived at your destination a year and a half later? That would be insane. But uh, yeah, that's how this game is. And there's one... Thing I would say with say about this game. There's one issue I have with it, and that's that time passes too quickly. Because I want to like sometimes just play a scenario and build massive rail networks with steam engines, but suddenly I'm in like the year 2005, and then well, there there goes my dream of a massive steam network. Either way, uh, we're gonna just slap on. Uh, let's go with three cars, maybe. What was the, uh, let's check this train out here. Uh, so we're going to run cars at about 15 tons each. You can check out different weights, how much they will be able to carry, or like what kind of speed you can expect, or what different grades you're passing here. So I think uh, we can, it doesn't really matter, you put on one extra car and then it goes one mile per hour slower. So let's, uh... Check out this Washington train. We'll just go with four cars. Uh, we don't want to have it too slow. I will go with five. We'll go with five. Uh, we could go with six. 
Actually, let's just go with six. It's probably going to be fine. Now, another thing we want to do real quick is build a sanding and water tower here in uh, Washington. So that the trains have access to that. And we're just quickly going to see what we got in Baltimore as a saloon. Giving plus 5% to passenger revenue to trains, I believe, arriving here with passengers. You got a water tower, sand tower. Water tower will supply trains with water, obviously, and sand towers with sand. And uh, water needs to be... Well, you need to keep your trains supplied with water, otherwise they're going to move extremely slow. If you don't have sand on them, they're going to climb hills extremely slow. And, uh, well, uh, this hill is a roundhouse. The roundhouse will do the maintenance of trains, making sure they don't break down as often, although when you pl uh, play on hard difficulty, there will be more prevalent breakdowns than on easy difficulty. So that's just a thing we're going to have to deal with. It will also supply trains with oil, and you need some oil. I think we're set up good to kind of just start running here. Um, there's probably a few things I missed, but I'll probably get to them at some point. So we're just gonna unpause. We'll put game speed to 5, because these initial trains are really slow. Now, the longer you haul goods, the longer distance, the more you get when they arrive at a distance, or at a destination. But... Also, the longer you keep transporting them, the less they will be worth when they get there. So actually, we can see here now, this, this train going to Washington is currently worth 400,000. Now there might be a, a situation where like the, suddenly there's a boom, or there's a s crash economically, and this will change due to that. Like if there's a crash, it will be worth less. If there's a boom, it will be worth more. But now, it's worth 400,000. As we progress a little bit, it will be worth a lot less. However, as soon as Baltimore train, or this uh, train from Washington hits Baltimore, we're going to be making around a million. And uh, that's just going to be very nice for us. With a million, we can do a lot. So yeah, as you can see, these trains are extremely slow. And the cargo on this is now worth 388,000. But I think it's a good idea to just haul six cars, actually. Although you get there a bit slower, when you get there, you do get a lot more. But that's uh, up to you how you want to do that. Either way, it should be fine. Depending on what you want to achieve with your things. Right, so we are going into a recession. And that's unfortunate, because uh, that's going to make everything worth a lot less. This was at 388,000. Uh, 351,000, so maybe it's not that bad, actually. Well, you can see it more on the, this train here. It's now worth 976,000, but it is definitely still good enough. Oh, there's one thing I forgot to mention. When you're not dabbling in the stock market, you can change dividend. This is basically what you... Oh, did I, did I mention that? Did we? Uh, okay, so I guess I mentioned that. <laughs> okay, well. Uh, yeah, my short-term memory isn't the best in the world. But you can see the difference here. This has six cars, this has two, this moves much faster. Now, but once this hits the uh, station, we'll get some profits and we can start building some more stuff. Getting some more trains and uh, working towards uh, our end goal. Which is gold. And transporting 12 cars. Now once these two cars, uh, these two trains there arrive, We'll already have transported eight cars, so we need four more after that. So that's not very hard at all. Any player should be able to do that, um, if you just know the basics of the game. And there's the John Bull. So we could have had that a year earlier. And like, is it worth it to have this? Yes, probably, but I wouldn't have it earlier. We're going to upgrade our trains to that, so that we get... Uh, more profit out of each time we reach a station. We're gonna make 310,000 and we'll make more profit because the train will get to the station faster. So now, out of Washington, we're actually gonna just pick up the two uh, mail cars that are available here. But before we do that, we're gonna replace the train with a John Bull. And we're gonna replace this other train with a John Bull. So, what I said about you can save maybe 32,000 is because you buy these for 16,000, 32,000 total, these two trains. And then you buy these to replace them for like less than 50,000 uh, for two of them. 
And we're just gonna... When you uh, replace the train, it will stop dead in its tracks and then kind of resume acceleration from there. But either way, it should get to its destination a lot faster. And, uh, yeah. We're just gonna roll out and keep going. We might not want to have uh, six cars, actually. It is quite slow. And it's gonna possibly cause some issues. You can upgrade a double track. You can also upgrade a double track. When you see two trains are gonna meet each other at one section of rail, you can just upgrade the section ahead of them. Don't upgrade below the train, it will stop the train and will have to accelerate up again. Try to keep at least like this kind of distance from the train if you want to do that. And that way they will not stop each other, they will just, uh, you can upgrade as I said, and they will go on the separate tracks and just pass each other while moving. So I know that I've already messed up quite a few times in the English and I did warn you that uh, my English will be a bit faulty. It is not my native language. I am a Norwegian, so, uh, well, that's my native language. Although, hopefully, I am understandable. So we're gonna make a profit of, like, 800,000 when this hits Baltimore, and then we can really start doing some stuff, uh, And these, these bridges really slow. If you can avoid these bridges... Avoid these bridges. Sometimes it doesn't really matter, but as you can see, it's really slowing down the trains. I mean, this train has gone basically okay. So, yeah, I mean, the speed difference is tremendous. Huh? Like, this train has gone to Washington and back to Baltimore in the time it has taken this train to get from Washington to Baltimore. And now we got the profits, and from Baltimore we can take, uh, we're just going to take three cars, because there's not really that much in supply here. And the other train can run some of that too. And now that we have that, we're going to get another uh, train going from Washington up to Baltimore. We'll just do three cars. That seems like a good place to be going. You moved eight loads of cargo. And etc, etc. Minimum conditions reached, and we're actually going to just... Uh, Connect relay as well. Put a sanding and water tower there, and we'll put a uh, roundhouse. Provides maintenance to engines that pass through the station. Engines that do not stop to receive scheduled maintenance are far more expensive to operate. Right. And it might break down. Well, I don't know if that has anything to do with that, actually. Uh, I always thought it did, but maybe it doesn't. On that wording, I'm getting a little bit uncertain. Now, there are some options. Uh, we're not going to dabble into too much of what you can do here in this scenario, because it doesn't really matter, but... This... Uh, I don't know what is this, like a pressure gauge, maybe? Speedometer? It's one of these two things. You can see how the breakdown chance per year. This is how fast the train will go. You can crank this back. And the train will go a lot slower from that, but uh, then you will reduce the chance of a breakdown. However, a 0.8% chance of breakdown is not bad, so we can keep it at that. We can even speed it up a little bit and have a 3.9 chance at full maximum throttle. This is something you can dabble around with. I find that usually you don't need to do that so much, but it, it it's a level of min-maxing that you can do if you want to. That being said, we're going to put a train going from Relay to Washington as well. Uh, there's not that much you can carry. Do they demand uh, grain down here? They do not. So we're just going to bring the mail and passengers. And we don't need to do this at all, so don't think that you have to. But I'm going to upgrade to double track. Sometimes if you have enough money for it and you know you're going to upgrade to double track at some point, it could be better to just... Go for the double track right away because it is more expensive to create a single track and then upgrade it to a double track than it is to just go for the double track and what i like to do early in most scenarios is min maxing a little bit on uh, on what the uh, trains are making so you what you can do is you can set up like this, you just go, well, we're gonna have this, run all stations, bam, that's just it, and we leave it like that, that's all it's gonna, that's all it's gonna do, just transport that. Um, 
But what I like to do early in scenarios is to just, when it gets to the station, I see what's available and I customize the loadout based on that. And uh, that way you can net a little bit more profit, which can really help you get that snowball rolling. But at some point you get so many trains that it's just tedious to, to keep track of that all the time. Right now we have four trains on this list. And once you start populating this with like 10 or more trains, it's just a little bit stressful to scroll back up and down and see what every train is uh, doing at all times and keep track of it and be on top of making sure you load. And So, this is early game for me and then I just kind of more automate it earlier. Uh, we've spent a lot of money already um, on this track. We could have expanded and probably connected to Harper's Ferry. But instead we went for the double track, which will give us a little bit uh, quicker profits as the trains will not stop each other. So we're going to speed it up back to 5 again here. And uh, yeah, we're just going to keep running trains. We could also upgrade this station actually, but it is fine for now. Alright, so it's about to hit Baltimore for another 240,000 in profit. And we're going to take the two passengers that are there once we get there. And there's another passenger. So it's it's good to wait for this bell. Because when you're on the station, as you as just demonstrated right now, I set up two momentarily after it hit the station, and now there's three available. So, something to keep in mind. And all we're doing now is waiting for more profit. And... Since I don't really care that much, we're just going to go for a uh, large station here and encompass everything and we'll now have more passengers available in Washington. In fact, so many that we're going to just pour out another John Bull and we'll send it to who the hell knows. We'll send it between the cities there and set it up like this maybe on all stations. This is an example of a train that I would automate. We're just going to stick to three cars on every train so they don't move so slow. And I'm not going to pay any attention to that train. We're just going to pay attention to the other trains. Because I'm not a big fan personally of flipping back and forth all this time. It's a lot more stressful to keep track of stuff that way. And uh, yeah, okay, you got investors, you got salary, you got... Well, we got a bonus, you can get those. These things we'll get more into in the scenarios where they actually are... A thing that you need to care about. Alright, so we're in Washington. We're just gonna drag three mail cards back to Relay. And let's be honest there. Uh, we can put another train on the tracks. Baltimore Relay. We're just gonna automate it. Uh, whoops. Had to throttle there by accident. Automate it. Three passenger. I don't care. Let's just go. Let's do it. It's gonna be making money. It's just added profits, really, because now Washington is just throwing passengers at us, basically. I mean, it's, it's throwing passengers at us so much that we can just really go for another one. Oh, I actually set that up a bit wrong. So we're going to go back and... Uh, I want Washington, Baltimore, and back to Washington and to Relay, so it doesn't kind of like deplete one station too much. Although it doesn't really matter, and it might not even make a difference at all, but we're just gonna keep going here. Wait for that profit to come rolling in, and then we're gonna start expanding. New engine available, uh, 040 Do It Clinton. It is uh, not good, we'll just leave it at that. So in Baltimore, we can pick up two mail and a passenger, we'll just keep it at three cars. You can do this any way you like, but three cars seem to move along quickly enough, and 6 kind of slugged a little bit. And then we have made so much money that we can probably start the expansion process. There was another train that hit the station as well. Ah, it was one of those we weren't watching. Yes, it was. Now, since we automated this train here, it hit relay and there was nothing in relay, so now it's just running around empty. This is wasteful. This means it's running empty cars that slows it down, and takes up track capacity. And what I mean by that is that, uh, and this is something that isn't really that important right now, but in the future, and particularly if you're running single track, the train now has takes up this amount of track here. If you have another car, three cars, it will take up this amount of track. 
Now, if you have three empty tracks taking up that track space, they might block other trains, and they will also move slower due to that. So, yeah, traffic jams can occur, and it's something to keep an eye out for. So you don't want to have too many automated passenger trains that are just, like, not really calling anything. Uh, this is in Washington now, and we're going to just load this when we get there, I think. We're unloading currently. Alright, that's why it's grayed up, because it's unloading. I was kind of tripping a bit about that. Uh, either way, let's see if we can issue some more bonds. Yes, we can issue bonds now, because our credit rating is good. So we're just going to do that. Now we have 3 million available, and we've already met our initial criteria. I mean, I mean, we can keep this running here and keep making more money if we want, and just kind of play the map. But I'm just going to try to be a little bit efficient when I play through these scenarios, and try to show you how you can uh, acquire gold. So, whoops, I uh, built an extra track <laughs> by accident. Uh, but I think we're good. We have enough money to deal with that. So we're just going to connect Harper's Ferry. We'll just go with a small station. We're not going to need to run any trains there. And as you can see, Baltimore and Ohio reaches Harper's Ferry. So we got silver in uh, under the belt now. And then we're just going to lay track. Uh, one thing is, like, steeper tracks are more expensive to lay. So that's also something to keep in mind. But... Uh, Again, it doesn't really matter. No, so I had to mute myself there for a second. I mean, we can even build like this. It doesn't matter. This track still counts as connected. I made a misclick or something. It's whatever. We're just going to finish this mission real quick. I mean, we can even... Uh, we can get creative here. I mean, we have the money for it. Uh, so let's see. Say I build uh, down... Uh, let's just go for a fancy bridge. Like, you can make long bridges like this, they're expensive as hell, but you can do it. And uh, there we go, bam, we have connected Philadelphia, and that was mission one. We are done in, what's that, three years or something? A little over three years. Could have done it faster, probably, but uh, uh, we had ten years to do it, so... Yeah, I mean, we're just gonna unpause and claim our gold medal. Okay, maybe we speed it up so it actually happens faster. Did we not connect Philadelphia? We did. Alright. Alright, as you can see here. Yes, thank you for the applause. Thank you, thank you. Marvelous job. Your victory will set the stage for all who follow. The board of directors has awarded you a gold medal in recognition of your feat. And there you go. So, you can do it any way you want. And uh, this will count as a connected track, even though... Um, yeah, good luck actually in reality getting a train down here and then turning it around and going this way. That could be tricky. You'd have to reverse. Yeah, this is a weird ass section. But so that's um, that's it basically. So um, hopefully this was informative, entertaining and enjoyable or at least one of these things. And if you did like it, I'd appreciate it if you'd consider leaving a like or maybe subscribing for future content like this. And or leaving a comment if you feel like you got something to say. Either way, thank you for watching. Have a good one and you can catch me in the next one. Peace out.